solving problems using the traditional method. And remember, the traditional method means that we'll be finding critical values. So my problem reads, use a 0.01 significance level to test the claim that sigma is greater than 5. The sample statistics are listed. So as I read the question, I saw the word claim. And what comes after the claim is the part that I'm going to be writing out. But it's given for me. Sigma greater than 5 is all I'm given. I'm not given a sentence. And since the greater than symbol goes in the alternate hypothesis, I'm just going to write sigma greater than 5 as my claim in the alternate hypothesis. And so for the null hypothesis, the pre-existing statistic, sigma equals 5. The standard deviation is 5. We don't know what this content is about. Now, normally off to the side, I list all my pertinent data, but since it's already given to me here, I'm not going to rewrite it. Although notice you're given x bar, the sample average. You're not going to use that for this problem. Um, you can't find a standard deviation, a sample standard deviation, without a sample mean, since the standard deviation is how far the numbers are away from the mean. So since they already had it, it was just given to you. Okay, first thing I want to do is find my test statistic. So chi squared equals n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared, sample standard deviation squared divided by population standard deviation squared. Um, so all I've done is just copy the formula right off of my table, and now I'm going to fill in the values 16 minus 1 times 8 squared divided by 5 squared. I happen to write the squares inside the parentheses. I don't even know that I needed the parentheses, and you're probably not writing 16 minus 1. You're probably just writing 15, but for clarity's sake, I always like to fill in all the parts of the formula. So as I enter this into the calculator, I get 38.4. Pretty rare we don't get a value that has a decimal that keeps going, but I don't. Um, since I'm only supposed to write a decimal value from two to four places, if I don't have it, that's fine, or if you want to write 38.40, 400, for your test statistic, that's fine. Now I'm ready to find the critical value. So I need to start with a table, and I'll be starting with the chi-squared table. That's why I like when I write my test statistic is to write the chi-squared equals, or the z equals, or the t equals, because that gives me a little hint as to the table I'm using. Since the h1, the alternate hypothesis had the greater than symbol, I know that I have a right tail test. So that means I'll be going to column alpha, which in this case alpha was 0.01. Now you don't see alpha anywhere in the given question, but don't forget that significance level is the same thing as alpha. So the significance level of 0.01 means alpha is 0.01, and then row n minus 1 for degrees of freedom, so row 15 although you've already actually calculated n minus 1. So in row 15, column point 01, I find the value of 30.578. Next, I'm ready to decide whether I reject or fail to reject H0. So for part C, I start by drawing my chi-squared table, which remember, it's a right-skewed table, which starts at 0 and I start by drawing the critical value. Now, all I know is that I have zero at the bottom and I don't know what my final end number is before it seems to kind of pinch off, but I do know I have a right tail test, so I'm gonna draw the 30.578 somewhere on the right side. It doesn't matter how far over or not it is. Once I have my critical value, I can shade in my critical region. Since it's a right tail test, I shade to the right. And now I'm ready to list my test statistic. Again, I don't have scale as to where 38 would fall on this number line. I just know that 38 is larger than 30, so I draw it somewhere to the right. So my test statistic is to the right, and thus it's in the critical region. So I reject H0. Next, I go to my flow chart and see that H1 is my claim. I reject H0. So my final conclusion starts, the sample data supports the claim that, and usually I have to go reread the sentence to figure out what to word, but all I have is the claim that sigma is greater than 5. If that's all I'm given, that's what I need to fill in, sigma greater than 5, and I've completed my problem.